Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Papa Bear Podcast. The Papa Bear Podcast, if you're telling your friends about it. Today I have something very, very special for you, but we need to wait just a little bit before we get to that. We're not going to spend too much time waiting because we have a long episode for you today. At least longer than 19 minutes, which is what I had last time. And my producer almost did backflips. But this one still will have a, uh, a decent amount of content. So before we get back to that, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to everyone who's been showing love from the last episode. Absolutely fantastic. You guys have been amazing. And uh, yeah, I also wanted to just say there has been a lot of one of my favorite feedback moments was from a very good friend. And she knows who she is. And she said, listen, that was a really good podcast. But why did you talk about hamsters so much? And I just want to say, there is actually a method to my madness. If you're watching on YouTube, while I'm ranting and explaining all this, you might be thinking, who is this person over here? We're going to get to that. I have, ex I have instructed that she cannot talk or say or make any noises until I have introduced her. So she's sitting there in silence, which is not normal for her. What a look. So anyway, I wanted to talk about really quick about a couple of the uh, the polls and the questionnaires that we had on the socials. And the number one question that we had was uh, about the hamsters. Do you own a hamster or do you know somebody who owns a hamster? And I'm going to explain why this is important. Number one, I started this whole hamster thing on a publicity thing. You talk about something wild and crazy and then you just follow through with that and people want to know the answer of why you're talking about something wild and crazy. And then... It actually turned into, I need real scientific data on who actually has hamsters. Because as the answers started rolling in, what I found is that nobody who was answering actually had a hamster, but they all knew somebody who did. Or they just did. Y'all hear my baby in the background. She's a star of the podcast. So... This led me to believe that there is actually just one individual in the entire world, or at least the localized region, that owns a hamster, and all of these people are just mutual friends with this person. I don't know. I think it's a solid theory. Do you agree? Yeah. So good. Silent nodding. So good. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We've got something really special for you today. That was about the only, only introduction I had there. But I need to uh, test something first before I introduce our guest. Hey, Ruthie. Is my guest. That was your introduction. Oh, hey. <laughs> okay, but I want to try something because I messed that up. But it's fine. We can, we can do this. I want you to try and stay silent for this one. Have you heard my Norwegian joke? No. Okay. Why does the Norwegian... Navy have barcodes on the sides of their ships so that when they get home they can scan the Navy in. <laughs> Welcome to the Dad Joke segment of the Papa Bear Podcast. Okay, let's dive right into this thing. It's actually really good. It was really good. Thank you. I saw it on Facebook. I can't take any credit for that. That was... That I'm actually was... like Norwegian by blood, so that's it. Oh, it ties in perfectly. So You're fine. What's that? <laughs> yeah. So wait, but you didn't know that they had barcodes on the sides of their ships. No, that's not true. That's not true. Okay. That's not true. It's <laughs> like, are you trolling me this early? One hundred percent. One hundred and ten percent. Okay, so I want to let's dive right into this one. I would like to introduce to everybody. If you are listening, you can't see her, but if you are no. watching on YouTube, you absolutely can. This in front of me, or to the side of me, as as I'm turning to face the camera, is a very, very close friend of mine. We've known each other for 12, 13 years? 11, 12, 11 something, 12 like, years. something like that. Way too long. Way too long. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. I just keep waiting for a grand of the friendship. <laughs> and uh, she's like, no, no, you're weird. I just, like, he's going to get sick of me one day and, like, putting up with my crap and just oh, dump me on like, the side of the road. That was, like, 10 years ago. Yeah, uh, here but, we are. <clears throat> yeah, so anyway, my guest today... For the very first guest on the Papa Bear podcast is Woo! Ruthie Erickson. Do you want to be known as Ruthie or Ruth? 
Oh, Ruthie, please. Ruthie, one hundred percent. So much better. So much better. It really. I mean, it I mean, is. No disrespect to any Ruth out there. None. But you're just like all. it's just it's not a very pretty name. It doesn't name. sound right. Like, it doesn't. I you Ruthie. Okay, so fun fact: when I was around twelve, I decided out of the blue that Ruthie sounded a lot prettier than Ruth. So I started asking people to call me that. Does it? That, wait, let me get my. my to, to my twelve-year-old brain, it sounded so much better. I feel like yeah. So. Hang on, I gotta do face face unlocking here. I've got a I've got a surprise. Oh That what? you didn't know about. You had suspicions. I had suspicions, but. That you didn't know about this. So. Let, let me get my my producer's input on this one. Um, what do you think, Ruthie or Ruth? Which which sounds? I like Ruthie. You know, Ruth from the Bible. You know. You can't get over that. You can't get like over yeah. That. But I like Ruthie. Ruthie. It's just a d- so gonna double whammy. With, we're gonna go with Ruthie, regardless Sound. of what you actually wanted. If you had said <laughs> Ruth, we would have gone with Ruth, and you would just have to live with it. For All right, the entire I see. Interview. So the rest of the podcast. <clears throat> you have a very good friend. Yeah, I which do. is not me. But you have a very good friend. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Uh, who, um, uh, she has a name, and I don't know if, uh, I feel like you just want her name to be on blast right now. Please do. Okay, yeah. her name is Destiny. Yes. She is a wonderful, fantastic person. I agree. At least so I hear. Yes, she um, is. She, she's my best friend. And, oh, yeah. uh, she is your best friend. She is. Way better than me. Totally. Thank you. That's, that's hands down. <laughs> and so, I wanted to ask you a question, and then I... I asked her a question as well. How would you oh, Lord. describe your personality? Me? You. How would oh, you no. Yourself? Are we going to do the whole comparing would thing? How you yourself describe your personality, Ruth? Mm. No. <laughs> e, Ruth, e. There we go. There we go. Um, I would say I'm annoying. Annoying? I'm Holy annoying. Cow. Yeah. Uh, eccentric. Eccentric. Okay. Yeah. And fun. I'd say I'm fun. Annoying, eccentric, and fun. Yeah. I'd okay. Say I'm fun. I can, I can roll with that. That yeah. sounds like that sounds like something that I I, I could imagine. I can hear that. <laughs> um, so one hundred percent. That's cool. Um, we decided here at the Pablo Bear podcast to ask Destiny. We the, being like just you yourself and you. I have to say we. In plural. We. There's voices. We decided to <laughs> ask. Destiny, your best friend, uh-huh. what she would describe your personality as. Her true personality. She is quite humorous. <laughs> Sassy, for sure. True. With true. the girl next door demeanor. I think it says demean. What is that even supposed to mean? <laughs> I don't know. You should ask her about that because... I'm, I am. Ooh, I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> do we need to talk? That, that could imply... Oh, I mean, I've seen oh. enough music videos to kind of guess what that might mean but we'll just we'll roll with it <laughs> uh but all of this only if she knows you so only if you know somebody um level-headed but slightly judgmental oh, oh. <laughs> her looks <Whoa. laughs> tell all that she can kill you with the raise of one eyebrow which is true that's facts i don't care what you look at them right there <laughs> right there Y'all saw that? It was the eyebrow. Some of you just died. It's okay. And her heart Rolling over your grave. is kind and merciful and is what makes her a light shine so bright on others. Aww. I think she led that up intentionally. Like she's like, let me get all of the terrible things out and then yeah. Yeah. crush it she's back like, down. I'm like, just going to throw okay. judgmental into there. She ain't wrong, though. She's, she's not. She's not wrong. She's not. I've, I've known you for long enough she, to... Uh, she's, she's keeping it real. She's <laughs> so when is the day we're gonna get to turn the tables and i'm gonna get to say all the stuff about her next podcast if, if i ever like interview her okay but you've got to find a reason for me to interview her that's true how would i why would i interview her? oh oh i feel like she's oh. an awesome person oh yeah but you need to give me a topic okay okay all right cool all right, all right. We, we already got homework man this so, is the kind of podcast we want <laughs> you do already have homework um <laughs> so i'm gonna jump ahead just a little bit here um just a little bit about you you uh, you are actually from a... I'm not going to name the town because you know, that might be creepy. <laughs> uh, just to let you guys know the commitment level of Ruthie here. She drove for two hours after work to be here. Just to let you know. It's because they had nothing better to do on like so, a... So, single guys, Tuesday single night. Christian guys, <laughs> her commitment level is on point. It's on point. Go to the end of the world for you. 
Not really. At least two hours. At least two hours. At least two hours. So you are uh, you are from two hours away, mm-hmm. which I don't even know if people know where we're at. Yeah. So you're just two hours away in infinite space and time. Mm-hmm. Um, in light years. In light years. You also are part of your worship leader team. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what do you play? So I play the keyboard. Okay. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At least you didn't say guitar. No. Sorry, I'm not guitarist. I'm not that cool. I'm sorry, guitarists. I can't get on your level. Yeah, we can't do that. Uh, <laughs> what would you say is your favorite part of serving in the worship team? Oh, man. So I guess if anybody has ever served on their worship team, we do things a little bit odd. I don't know if every place does this, but we have our sir, our um, practice and our sound check and everything like completely beforehand. Mm-hmm. So we'll get to the uh, building two and a half, three hours early. And just do our entire set practice beforehand. So by the time people come in, it's like really fresh and new. It's it's great. It actually works out really well. So it's very coordinated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, very coordinated. And so I think my favorite part about doing it is whenever we're there and we've finished our sound check and we finished um, the run throughs and everything. And there's always like 20 to 30 minutes of like a lull in between the end of sound check and then the beginning of the actual service and it's just very quiet and it's very peaceful and like we know what songs we're doing and so um it's just the peace in that building as you're waiting for people to come in to it and knowing that voices are about to be lifted up to the lord and it's going to be great so like that anticipation mm. it's my favorite thing in the world mm. oh my goodness mm. well wow was not expecting that that was very good Thanks. holy cow that's like i was just expecting I oh i like playing <laughs> it's fun there's a level of depth here there's guys depth. holy cow like okay. an onion different <laughs> layers so uh listen yeah we um on the last episode we kept it very light mm. we well it was not, the first episode it was the first episode if we didn't talk about anything besides just hamsters and i don't know christmas traditions that we hate I feel like it would be inappropriate. This episode, we're going to get deep. I can't say heavy because that's another podcast. I think think they would come after me for copyright infringement. I'll get a call from Connor and be like, we edited that out completely because you can't take it. You can't use that word. I fully intend on using that word, heavy. Copyright the word heavy. Anytime that I go on their show, I'm going to be like, this is my turn. I'm going to own this word like it's mine. This is my word. Copyright. (laughs) <laughs> so, but we are going to get deep today because the I mean, last little bit of an introduction that I need to do for you, you are the social media coordinator yep. for an organization called Path to Freedom. Yes. Now, what is Path to Freedom? So, Path to Freedom is um, a nonprofit organization down in Southwest Florida um, that strives to bring hope and healing for victims of human trafficking or particularly sex trafficking so they're in the process of opening up a safe house and so as soon as that opens then we'll be able to take in girls um, that have been rescued out of sex trafficking so they don't have to go into the foster system so yeah obviously by that answer we are we are not we're not we're not playing in shallow waters today Saying a light topic guys yeah really um but listen <laughs> this is actually really exciting and <clears throat> Excuse me, there's um there's sickness in this household. This is actually really exciting. Um I know we're on episode two and maybe this is a little little out of the water here. Um but the 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 design of the Papa Bear pod, podcast um is to talk about issues that affect our culture and affect, you know, especially like I have a daughter and, and the culture that she's going to be raised in and and a lot of parents who will have kids who are raising those kids in this culture. And we want to talk about these issues that really affect the culture that they're being raised in. And this is probably one of the number one issues. Like this is something that we don't, we don't think about. This is something that I, I feel has had more traction lately, Mm -hmm. but I don't know that it's still gotten the, uh, the amount of airtime. Yeah. That it deserves. Yeah, so, I agree. So, <clears throat> sorry, we we want to dive in here just a little bit. Um, could you explain for our amazing fifteen listeners, <laughs> all fifteen, all of fifteen them. of them? Uh, I mean, it's fourteen if you count this as a listener. Oh, you're right. Sitting right you here, were, so. you were number fifteen. I, I was. The 13th. Hey, so our producer was one. <laughs> 
We're down to 13. All 13 guys. listeners. Wait, my mom's in the room. I think my wife can hear. We're down to like 10 now, guys. JR's got two, so we're, we're beating JR's him. So. <laughs> oh, my baby's here. We're definitely at 10 now. <sighs> Numbers wow, are guys. dwindling. Well, guys. Well, for the other 10 or 9 of you guys that are still listening, would you would you break down exactly or in your own words, what human trafficking is. Mm -hmm. So human trafficking is the exploitation of a person, essentially, in like a very condensed version. So people uh, can be exploited through many, many different ways. So there's many different kinds of trafficking. Um, And we call trafficking modern day slavery. Because if you say there are 40 million slaves in the world today, I think here in our culture, our minds just go back to the kind of slavery that we learned about in um, history class, you know, when, so I think that's why it's common to be um, referring to it as modern day slavery, because that's what it is. It's slavery, but it's just in a, in a very modern sense. So it's just, um, the nuts and bolts of it is a person being exploited, um, against, against their will. Wow. And, and man, 40 million, that is not Mm -hmm. a number that you would expect to hear i think no i mean that that sounds to me like oh well there's seven billion people in this country and you know 40 million that's a that's a huge is that a planet is that the planet in a planet no guys so that's actually even bigger percentage of this country (laughs) (laughs) wow don't uh don't let me don't let me take your test for you but that's a huge number. Don't Four call million. me expert on things either. Yeah, don't call me an expert, please don't. Please don't. Um, don't don't reference this podcast to. I'm sorry, guys. I the there's a very cute and adorable little baby here. You can't see her, but she is actually the cutest baby ever. She's in one of those towels with the little hoodies. Yeah, makes would look you, like a would, bear. Could you describe that towel for us? It's like a white polar bear towel. That's like got ears. It's it's so cute. It's very cute. Cute. And this is the point where I have to say good night, babies. Y'all just heard me. Good night, baby. That's what a real dad sounds like. <laughs> night, night, babe. <laughs> okay. Um, back to it. Sorry. Uh, that was very important. So forty million, forty million people mm. currently in slavery. Yes. And and I think you hit that right on the nail. We don't think about that. Mm-hmm. Like I. I even having a, an understanding that it is a very real thing and, and I know that it exists and I've known that from a, a fairly young age and knowing these things, <clears throat> I would still never think that it's such a volume. I mean, this is not mm-hmm. something that you, you sit back and you say, oh, well, there's 40 million people currently enslaved in the, in the world. Mm. And yeah. that's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not something that we think about in just like our daily lives, unless you're living in it, obviously, or unless you know somebody, I guess, that has been affected by it or has been exploited that way. But, I mean, it certainly wasn't in my case. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's just crazy. Yeah. Sorry, all my notes just went off. Um, He's not prepared. Okay, so as, as large of a number as 40 million... That was a terrible time to laugh. You guys, stop distracting me. That was terrible. That was awful. Uh, as large a number as 40 million, where, where is this coming from? What, it, what would you say is the most common forms in our country? So generally, to my understanding, there's three different types of modern day slavery. So you have sex trafficking, which I think a lot of us are a little bit more familiar with and then you have labor trafficking which Mm -hmm. takes on many different forms just in of itself and then you have organ trafficking where people are actually trafficked for their internal organs and where those are sold that's that's super intense it's it's yeah it's a lot and and there's heavy and that's only like the three major ones right there's like So those are the three general ones. So think of it kind of like as a tree branch. Those are the three main limbs. And then out of those branches come so many different leaves and it takes so many different forms. So those are the three main forms. But there's several types of mini forms within that, within each one. And and stuff that we don't think about. Oh, yeah. uh, Wow. That's intense. Um, Let's talk about some correlation here. Um, Okay. 
stuff that that we don't we don't typically like to think of it and i think it's it's such a taboo topic Mm -hmm. kind of um is uh we as a culture don't we don't like to talk about porn no if we can just be real about it yeah Uh, we don't like to talk about porn Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're not gonna get super detailed we're a family friendly show but i i feel like we need to feel the weight of this issue yeah um and we as a culture have actually and, and i don't know if it's just that i'm more aware of it or if it's um if it actually has increased in severity that when i was a kid you know porn was it was there mm. we knew it was there we knew people were viewing it we knew but it was not as broadcasted i think as it is today yeah and it wasn't as accessible yeah it wasn't as easy to to get your hands on it yeah 100 percent. i mean they're you know um but the the porn industry a and i think you posted this today 32 billion Mm dollar industry 32 billion dollar industry and listen like we i don't want to i don't want to like get off on the on the wrong subject here or anything like but pornography for the for the most generalized stuff is free like you can get porn for free 100 percent yeah but we still as a culture have made this a 32 billion dollar industry mm-hmm. which is insane to me and that doesn't just include like websites and magazines and pictures and all like this this includes also the the sale of human beings mm-hmm. yeah so how how big of an issue and how how do they play off of each other would you say is is the porn industry to human trafficking so there is a big demand for commercial sex i think that's really where it begins and then sex trafficking exists just to fuel that demand Mm. so sex trafficking itself doesn't exist you know isolated from other things it exists because there are people that have a demand for sex and that are demanding different forms of sex and demanding different girls and like different you know kids and all different kinds of things and so um that's really the tie that pornography plays into the sex trafficking industry is there is a correlation um and i think a lot of the times we kind of tend to justify pornography as adults by saying oh everybody there is there are adults they're consenting it's fine it's not hurting anybody else when i don't have um specific statistics but many um sex trafficking survivors testified that they were forced to be um participants of making pornography so when it comes to statistics like we need to uh we don't often think about when we're viewing those pictures or those images that there are people there that might not be there willingly Mm -hmm and that aren't voluntarily doing this or, or making money off of it and that you are um, using another person's exploitation for your own gain without even realizing it. Um, and so that's really the tie between pornography and the sex trafficking industry and we kind of tell ourselves the lie that it's fine. Um, but in reality, that's that's just simply not true. So. And I, and I think that we don't understand how much of a sickness that it is. I mean, mm-hmm. really, the, on, on yeah. our society on ourselves on our generation of leaders and and people who Mm -hmm. who are getting so sucked into this yeah and so many studies are coming out about the um effects of pornography on the brain and how it's it's an addictive substance oh 100 percent. oh yeah and uh i think the last we're going back to the, the statistic the last statistic i saw was that 70 percent of all Asian pornography involved people who were involved in human trafficking. I believe it. Which is insane. I don't think that's a stretch. Yeah. That, that's insane to me. 70%. Yeah. And and according to polls, and which apparently come out every year now, uh, a major mm-hmm. pornographic website puts out information and statistics every year that Asian is one of the number one searched items. Mm-hmm. So there's that demand that you're talking about. Yeah. And it's one of the things that's so, I don't want to say wonky, but it's so hard when you're um, talking about human trafficking is like statistics. We can come up with like statistics all day, but in reality, we really don't know how many people are being trafficked until rings are busted or until people become free or whenever we're able to to free people from being exploited and so the statistics can try to give us an accurate measure but we don't know what we don't know yeah because it's so hidden 
That's terrifying. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, that's terrifying. I'm trying not to go off on, we could talk about this for hours. Yeah, we literally. We literally sat down and we're like, okay, what do we want to talk about? And we came up with notes and I'm like, okay, we got to shred this down because we will talk. Uh-huh. This will be the daily dose of heavy because we'll talk for an hour straight and not, I mean, it's, it's, it's a heavy topic. And we, again, we don't think about it so much, mm-hmm. but it is so there. Mm-hmm. And so the next part, the, the next point that I really want to talk about, and I'm very interested in, because we didn't talk about this okay. beforehand. Yeah. And so I'm interested to hear how this how this plays in. One of the very big, y'all hear my baby in the background. One of the very big things that I think actually there is also studies coming out that it is also an addicting thing is social media. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have a note. You sent me a note. That's that for a topic of discussion that says human trafficking and social media. Mm-hmm. So I'm very interested to hear how, how do these two play together? So one of the things that Path to Freedom really likes to hone in on is whenever we're educating people about human trafficking, uh, the dangers of a lot of social media platforms. So as the media and the different platforms that we're using becomes more sophisticated, then it's a lot easier for traffickers to find people to exploit. Mm-hmm. Um, And so it becomes so much easier for people to um, get in contact with girls that are younger or get in contact with young boys just playing video games can be one. Yeah, I think Um, I just saw something where where they were finding that predators were mm -hmm. going through Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like the mode of access has become a whole lot easier with social media. Mm -hmm. So what we like to do typically down... um, in the area that I'm from <laughs> is we really try to educate people on the dangers of different social media because you have young girls who want to be liked and they want to be very popular and they want their stuff to be out there and yeah. they don't realize that the kind of image that they're portraying is very attractive to somebody who wants that or somebody that who needs another person to be used and so um just things like your location services making sure everything is like off and that you're being safe that you're not chatting up strangers you know unless you're getting an uber um but yeah, just, <laughs> just times have changed. you know <laughs> don't talk to strangers don't get in a stranger's car get in their cars get in their car and talk to a stranger yeah and give them five stars mm. but okay five so stars. What yeah so is a, is a huge uh <laughs> my baby um She's fighting to sleep right now. She's also getting over some sickness. So y'all, y'all love on her. Um, what would you Much say fun. is the biggest thing that somebody could do, especially like a, a, a younger person, somebody in teenage years, like they're mm-hmm. starting to be interactive with social media more. Mm-hmm. And I say teenage years. I, I think kids are actually now like kids. Yeah. And their parents are giving them an iPhone and yeah. saying, here, go ahead. And here's a Facebook yeah. account. Here's Snapchat. Here's yeah. first off, Snapchat ha- is of First off, I think, I think the devil made Snapchat. Delete your I Snapchat. Think, dude, I think that's that's rule number one. I think the devil made Snapchat. Delete there is your Snapchat. no <laughs> other reason for an app that lets you send a picture that goes away forever in ten seconds. Mm-hmm. No other reason. Yeah. Okay, and we yeah. can talk about that, but we're not going yeah. to. Yeah. But as far as like what you can be aware of is don't let strangers follow you. Honestly, yeah. that's just common sense, y'all. Common sense, ladies, guys, gents. Yeah. Just don't let strangers follow then, you. Because at the end of the day, you know, you want to be, you want to be just aware of yeah. like who's watching your content. So like if like an older man like wants to follow you and you're always just kind of like, eh, just because you know them isn't an excuse to let them follow you, yeah. even if it's somebody that you know. So another fact that you probably didn't know, um, eight out of 10 people who are trafficked to know their trafficker personally, like they already have a relationship with that person. Mm-hmm. So there's usually already some kind of uh a bond or connection or relationship so, so most of the time like through social media they've been they've been contacting or is this are we talking like an actual they yeah. know this person physically yeah wow. yeah mm-hmm. the second one they that's, know that's this insane. person so that's absolutely so yeah just just using common sense when it comes to like who you follow and who you let follow you and who can see your stuff because if you're going to be posting like cute selfies and stuff do you really want to see you really want an, an older man to be looking at Listen, that as a teenager if you don't want your your parents to follow you yeah. Don't let some creepy old man. Yeah. Know, yeah. That just seems like. Uh huh. Come on. Or just anybody that you that you don't really know. Like the number of followers you have ain't as important as. Exactly. Be safe. As you being safe. Um, Be safe out so there. So please, please take that advice. That's really good advice, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that's super important. Um. So what are? I think we need to talk about this, and then we'll we'll head into the last, the last section here. Yeah. 
What are some signs? Like, <clears throat> um, you were telling us a story, and it was, uh, it was, yeah. I'll let you tell this story. But what you know, you were saying the word red flag. So yeah. What are tell after, after you tell the story? Like, what are some of those red flags that we need to be on the lookout for? So, so uh, a couple months back, I uh, received a text from just a random number that I didn't have saved in my contacts. So it was a familiar area code. So I was just, I mean, it's a big area code, but sure. nah, that doesn't matter. Um, and it was just very, very explicit pornographic pictures mm. of a girl. And, and I'm not an expert, but this girl did not look very old, just okay. like from my snap judgment and just a bunch of following messages from what I perceived to be like a guy. And then the messages were very, you know, come and get it. We're going to be here type of type of content, you know. Um, and then so I was like, you know, so many red flags because so many because so this wasn't the girl that was sending the messages. You could tell they so, were. OK, so the, the first red flag is this isn't a person. This this feels like somebody is, this yeah. is happening against somebody's will. Yeah, exactly. So it's not a picture of a girl taking a picture of herself sure. and sending it to somebody in first person sure. saying, you know, come and get it. This was a third person type okay. of deal. Um, so that was one, the sure. biggest red flag for me. Um, and different things uh, indicated that this wasn't the first time this conversation had been happening with whoever he was supposed to have sent the message to. Yeah. So I took it down to the local authorities and I was like, hey, I work with a lot with victims of human trafficking um, in my area. This is sending up a lot of red flags to me. This is what it is. And so the detective really took a look at it. And I kid you not, his exact words were, well, this doesn't really seem like human trafficking. To me, it just seems like sex. And I got so mad because I was like, who trained you? And I think who trained actually, you? That's, that's a good point. I think a lot of this actually could be pointed back to, you know, you pointed out that it was a rural yeah, it wasn't a rural area, so it's not a big city. So trafficking can happen anywhere, especially when it comes to things like labor trafficking. Yeah. Like labor trafficking is very predominant in cities, but also when you have a lot of very heavy agriculture industries, oh, yeah. you can run into labor trafficking. But, you know, sex trafficking can happen in any rural area just as much as it can in a city. It's crazy. And, so. and I think a lot of the time, maybe departments aren't educated. Mm. Because we are, you know, in, especially in rural areas, I think that maybe there is a lack of education and there is a lack mm -hmm. of, of knowledge there. Well, I think a lot of it is just because we're still learning a lot about yeah. how modern day slavery operates within our um, tech that yeah. we have. Oh, sure. We're still learning a lot about it. Oh, and sure. so you have detectives that are constantly on the watch for pedophiles and things like that. But when it comes to trafficking, sometimes it can be hard to discern whether, you know, this is just someone advertising themselves for sex or if it's somebody else yeah. that's kind of yeah, the perpetrator is, and the one that's moved past mm -hmm. where we have a solid understanding before it goes to the next yeah. step. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Um, so a lot of red flags are just, you know, understand if it looks like somebody is, is in a situation against their will, they probably are. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, and <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Any other red flags that, that people can be on the lookout for? Yeah. So when it comes to sex trafficking, uh, we have this. We I didn't come up with this term, but there's a term that's called the boyfriend effect. So it's okay. essentially where a girl can potentially get into, and this isn't the only way that it can happen, obviously, but it it is very popular when a girl gets into a relationship with a guy, and then after a while those trust will start to build up and then slowly and surely like for traffickers it's all about control yeah. it's all about getting control and it's very very heavily based on manipulation mm -hmm. and so a person that is being trafficked a lot of the times won't really know that they're being trafficked because they've been manipulated into believing that yeah. they were in control of the situation or that they are just living with the consequences of their own decisions yeah. or you know different things like that and so the boyfriend effect is essentially when a boyfriend comes along and then over time starts doing things like hey if you love me you'll do this or you'll do this, or I've taken care of you and paid for all of these different things, so, so, you, owe you, so you owe me. Yeah. Um, and so just kind of being on the lookout 
for different things. Like if your friends are in like relationships where you're really getting a bad vibe from it, yeah. the guy's a bit older, maybe significantly older, or if there's a woman that's involved that's really giving you bad vibes, then just pay, pay attention to your gut. If you feel like something is wrong, then it, it's worth speaking up and it's worth telling somebody else about it. Yeah, that's I, I think that's really probably some of the best advice is, is actually talk about it. Yeah. Um, don't just keep anything to yourself um and there's a national human trafficking hotline so we'll put that number yeah, out we'll that number for out you guys yep and so even if it's just even if you have no concrete reasoning for why you might think that it's trafficking yeah. go ahead and call that number because yeah. you'd so much rather be safe than than sorry that's that's good so. um <clears throat> so before we close this up uh and we'll we'll kind of like we'll this this all sounds very heavy. This all oh man, I said it. Um, this all sounds <laughs> code very, word. Very, <laughs> Connor just sue me. Um, he's my he's a he's a, another podcast and my producer. I don't know if he would. I don't know. Um, before we, we don't know who he is, but he's close, cool. Yeah, yeah, he's he's fine. He's you know, FBI. He just uh, comes in and eats our pizza. It's fine. <laughs> that's not Connor. I know. That's that's Carson. Did you have pizza the last time? No. No? Connor didn't have pizza. Making me a So, or? Connor, Carson had pizza. Connor, we owe you a pizza. No, we don't. He owes you a pizza. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, this seems very deep, very, very, uh, I'm just going to say it, heavy. Um, and so, I, w- I want to talk about, like, bef- uh, there is a hope aspect. There is hope. There yes. is hope. And, I th- and we really, we need to hit on that because this can seem very like disconcerting and this can be like, Oh my goodness, if this is such a huge problem and it has been forever and nothing's changed, then there's obviously nothing that I can do. And I want to talk about that. But, but first, before we did that, I posted a poll and a questionnaire on our Instagram. And I said, uh, do you have any questions as the listening audience, um, that you would like me to ask you, Miss Ruthie? I yeah. spilled that every, it would have been worse than mashed potatoes. Um, <laughs> But any questions that we have to ask, and this is a perfect segue question. I love this. Um, is this happening in our community? And I was able to do just a little bit of research before you chime in here. Florida is number three. Yep. In the country mm-hmm. for human trafficking. Mm-hmm. Texas is number one and California is number two. And good job. Thank you for that. Um, and listen, like, without divulging where we are, we live in a very rural place. Um, and, and our entire surrounding counties are, are fairly rural. That's a very, very difficult word to say. Rural. 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 Well, I just want to go straight to the L instead of saying the rural. R. Rural. Um, we live in a fairly, like, rural county. And Not a, a lot fairly, of people. Like, area. Not a lot of people. There's actually the county next to us. Like, they actually did a study on this. It has more cows than people. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, that's crazy. Um, so, we want, so we want to talk. So, wait. Is it gone? Okay, I think it's gone. Okay, so. Sorry, I didn't pause it. <laughs> we can we can edit that one out. Um, so, but uh, in, in our community... Is this is the question? So what this means is, you know, in our tiny mm-hmm. little rural um, cow counties um, population, yeah. is this happening? Yes. Mm. And and I think we brought it up before. Like, rural does not mean uh, yeah that it can't happen. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the rest of your 12, 13 listeners aren't all from this area, so they. I might have one international listener. <laughs> one, inter- one international, international listener. But, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. Honestly, I would say how we can get involved with where we are is just do your research to find out if, if there are or any organizations in your area that are trying to combat modern-day slavery in different forms. So there's um, actually a company out in Waco, Texas called Jesus Said Love that basically all they do um, – is outreach to men who have bot sex and counseling for them so just hitting at that demand side so it can take so many different forms it doesn't have to be just women and girls but there's so many different kinds of trafficking as we talked about so there's going to be a lot of different um 
organizations that are going to try to come at it from different angles and stuff. So just do your research and find out if you have anything in your area. And if not, you can still get involved with a bunch of other organizations that are bigger and that are global or global or that are more global, that, that are, are global. global, that are global. Hey, <laughs> I was homeschooled. He was homeschooled. Only homeschoolers can make homeschooler jokes. That's true. If you're not homeschooled, you can't. <laughs> um, so know. talking about that, talking, uh, and we'll we'll kind of veer towards the end here. Um, talking about organizations that you can get involved with. You mm. are currently uh, Path to Freedom is doing a fundraiser. Not Path to Freedom. This is not Path to Freedom. This is Sorry. not Path to Freedom. I didn't do my research here. <laughs> 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 Uh, there is a completely different organization. Yeah. Uh, and would you tell us about, and I'm going to say this correctly, this time, <laughs> Dressember. Yes, you said it right. Thank you. You Thank said you it wrong like 10 times beforehand. Fantastic. Yeah. I was calling you this Dressmember. Right. And then I explained that it's just a play on the word Dress Dress December, December, and then it clicked in his head, and it made more sense, and the heavens opened. So and here if, we are. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you might notice that Ruthie is wearing a dress. I don't know if you can or not. Probably not. Probably not. Probably but she's not. wearing a dress. And why Why are you wearing a dress in Florida? Oh, no. In Florida? Well, because it's like never below 60 degrees. No, um, so... There's a very specific reason that there's, you're wearing a dress. There is a reason. There is a reason. So, I'm not a, I'm not a dress person. Like, she's not. I, I'm in a worship team. I'm not a, I'm not a dress person. Um... She buys the jeans with holes in them. Pre-cut holes. No. Um, I'm making myself. Got to rip them right to your anyway, specific liking. So why are you wearing <laughs> what, what is the very specific reason? Um, so I am participating in a fundraiser during the month of December. Um, and it's through this company called Dressember. So it was founded by this lady named Blythe Hill who decided to challenge herself to wear a dress every day through the month of December with no particular reason, just for funsies. And then she decided that it was a lot of fun and a lot of her friends wanted to join in and then thought, oh, I can actually do something with this instead of just for funsies. Um, and so she started using that as a way to bring awareness and raise funds for anti-human trafficking nonprofits. Um and so basically the challenge is simple. You wear a dress every day for the month of December. Use that as an opportunity to post on social media about it, different facts about human trafficking, a lot like we talked about here tonight. Um, and then just challenge people to learn more about human trafficking and to donate. So I have a personal Dress Ember fundraising page. Yeah, um, which so, we will put on the page. Which we will put on the page. We have a $1,300 goal for the month of December and are almost to the halfway point. All right. And it's about halfway through the month. So, so we need to push on this. So we need to push on this. And I'm a little bit of an anxious person, so I'm like, mm. so, so let's, let, me, let me go ahead and put a challenge out <laughs> yeah. um, to our 12 listeners. All 12 um, of y'all. All 12 of you guys. And I don't expect you guys to raise half of $1,300. Yeah, I'm no. not going to do that math on the fly. It's like six fifty. He was homeschooled. He can't do the math on the fly. Six fifty. I got it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. School. Uh, anyway, um, but I, mean, I don't expect you guys to raise six hundred and fifty dollars. No. Though that would be fantastic. Yeah, but um, you can uh, get in touch with the different. Um, grant partners so basically all the money that's raised through dress ember during the month of december and even the month of january gets split between the different grant partners that do on the ground work in combating human trafficking and modern day slavery so some of them are kind of popular so a21 just opened a freedom center in bulgaria and they have different places all over the world um that serve as you know on the ground rescue teams for women in like brothels and hostels and different things like that. There's another one called the IJM, which is the International Justice Mission. Um, there's some called Olive Crest, Thorn. There's a bunch of different ones that do a bunch of different things. Truckers Against Trafficking is one yes. of them. Yes. Yeah. So rest stops are common places of business for sex trafficking yeah. to occur. And so Truckers Against Trafficking is awesome because they teach truck drivers what sex trafficking is and to look for signs of it and how to report it. So, yeah, there's a bunch of different places. So if there's nothing in your area that you can get hands-on involved with, then consider um, either donating or just learning more about one of these bigger companies. So. And, and so let me put the challenge out there to our listeners. Um, we, will, we will put the link up uh, specifically for Ruthie's um, donation page. Yeah. And even if you can't donate this holiday season. Which is okay. Which is okay. That's fine. 
I want to challenge you guys to share the link. Mm. Put it out there. Get some momentum on it because yeah. the social media is such a is such a networked place. Yeah. You never know who's going to see it. Uh, and the more shares, the better. Uh, this needs momentum. This needs movement. And and I think we this is a great place to wrap up. Yeah. Um, because there is stuff that the average everyday person can do. Mm-hmm. There's stuff that the average everyday person can do during their nine to five. They don't have to be 100. percent This is their day job. This is what they do. They don't yeah. have to be the social media coordinator. Totally. They can just be, I, I can do it sitting in my office. I can share that link. Yeah. And so even if you can't just donate, let me challenge thumbs. you guys to share this link this this week, this holiday season. And if you can donate, fantastic. Yeah. If you need to wait till after Christmas. Even better. That's okay. <laughs> or not at all. Um, I won't hold you against it. Charities are not picky. No. Never. No. And, uh, but yeah, I think that's, that's where we'll kind of wrap this up here. Um. Mm. There is hope, uh, and if if you are listening to this, and, and allow me to put this out here, if you're listening to this and you are in a situation, um, please, any way that you can, reach out to somebody. Mm. Um, you know, you are, don't believe the lie that you are in a position where you do not deserve any better than where you are at. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and don't believe the lie that you have to live this life. Um there are, there are plenty of people, as, as we've mm-hmm. been saying, in organizations that, that love you, see your worth, see your value, mm-hmm. and uh, and want to see your life better in every bit. Yeah. Um, so, there's hope. Always. And uh, There's always hope. Fantastic. Um, so, thank you, Ruthie. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on and being yeah. the very first guest. Woo! Podcast. It was an podcast. honor, bro. That was a very deep episode number two. Yeah. Uh, and we're so, going to wrap that one up. Promise uh, they won't all be this deep. They won't always be this deep. I am also going to have. We're going to talk about bunnies. We're going to talk about bunnies and kittens in the next one just to liven up the tone a little bit. <laughs> What's wrong with bunnies? So, um, <laughs> next week, uh, I will have a co host. It's not who me. is actually it's not her who is actually also going to be my guest for our fourth episode so stay tuned for that yeah your you're third confused your fourth no your third? My third episode is going to be the co-host for the interview for my fourth oh i see i see his math see i was i was confused oh. uh, so we love you guys <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in and uh don't forget to like follow share subscribe because this is the Papa Bear. Papa Bear podcast. Yeah, the, yeah. the. Would you like to do it? Can I do it? Go ahead. The Papa Bear podcast. You didn't do it. Yeah, I did. No, you didn't. How did I do You're it? You're supposed to say, "Listen, you ready?" And then I'll let you do this. We'll edit this part. <laughs> we might edit where you messed it up, but this is the Papa Bear podcast. The Papa Bear podcast. If you're telling your friends. So it's the, and then the. If you're telling your friends. If you're telling your friends. Okay, ready, go ahead. This is the Papa Bear Podcast. I messed it up. (laughs) One more time. He's not going to have me back on the show. Oh, my gosh. We have... have All right, I can can get it. I can do it. I can do it. This has been the Papa Bear Podcast. The Papa Bear Podcast. Tell your friends. That'll work.